Hey everybody, it's Boston Blaisdell, Second Life resident and YouTube creator. I'm back today on the Second Life YouTube channel to bring you Second Life University, a series of bite-sized tutorials designed to help you navigate your virtual world. We're continuing the walkthroughs on helping you dress your avatar, and in this video, we're focusing on customizing your avatar with add-ons and accessories, specifically looking at how to apply and modify different types of hair, and also a range of accessories, including jewelry and clothing items. And I'll be showing you all of these actions, both for male and female avatars. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get straight into it. We're starting with men's hair, and we're here at the store Van Gogh, who produce a range of various styles. In my previous video on how to dress your avatar, I mentioned that it's always important to try a demo before purchasing any items. Demos are usually free and that will allow you to ensure that you're happy with the item before purchasing the full version. What's becoming more of a trend now is for hair creators to sell one single pack with their newer styles. And this includes all colors at an affordable price. So we're going ahead with this one here, which includes the different textures. To purchase the item for yourself, you can just right click the item then choose the pay option and confirm the amount of lindens. Now let's have a look at how to apply this. In most cases, we'll need to unpack our items as they'll arrive as a single object in our objects folder. You can also go to your recent tab, which filters down recently purchased items. To unpack, I'm right clicking the object and then choosing the word add. This will then attach it to my avatar and in most cases it will open up an unpacker HUD on my screen which I can then click to accept the main folder. Once unpacked, this will now appear as a separate folder in our inventory and when we expand it we can see a few different items. We have the mesh hair listed here and also a HUD which is what we'll use to change the colour and the style. The style that we purchased is only going to sit at the top of the head so before we add the Van Gogh hair, we're going to apply a hair base, which will sit beneath the mesh hair. Think of a hair base as a tattoo layer, which is baked onto the skin of your head. If you have a look ahead, there's lots of hair bases included for free, but I'm going to use one by the creator Volkston, because I already had this in my inventory and I like the style of their designs. So I'm choosing the brown option, and once this renders, it's starting to look a little more interesting. Even though it's baked onto the skin, it kind of gives the illusion of having some volume. But now we're ready to apply the mesh hair, so going back to the Van Gogh folder, we're now adding the hair and also the HUD by right-clicking and then choosing Add for both items. With men's hair in particular, usually when you first put it on, it will require some resizing to fit your head. Most hair has a resizing script attached to it and you can access that by clicking on the hair with your left mouse button. This will then open up a menu where you can target different axis points of the hair. X is usually the width of the hair, Y is the depth and Z is the height. If I click XYZ that will target all three at the same time and I can choose the percentage to increase it by. When I purchase hair I usually spend a few minutes getting it resized exactly how I like it. I may also slightly reposition the hair so it aligns with the hair base. And you can do that by right clicking the hair, choose the edit option, and then I move the hair slightly along the axis points on the arrows. And you can also rotate the object by holding down the control button. This all really depends on the shape, brand and size of your head. You may not need to do this part but I'm just showing you so you know what's possible. But the aim here is to ensure that the head isn't clipping through the hair. With the user interface HUD, we can easily change the textures by clicking on the colors. And this is the benefit of buying a pack which includes all textures. Of course, I'm wearing the Volkson hair base, which is brown. So if I was going for the black Van Gogh hairstyle, I would just swap my hair base to a black version. Doing that by simply going back to our Volkson folder, detaching the brown hair base, and then adding the black one. Once that all renders, we can see that everything matches nicely. There's even color tinting options in the HUD, so you can play around with some of these different shades by using the color picker and then using the horizontal slider to apply it. These can also be saved as a preset so that you can quickly reuse them later. Let's take a quick look at another hair creator and this time we're at the store Camo, who sell unisex mesh hair in an eclectic range of styles. Once we find a style that we like, we can either grab the demo 
or go for the full version if we're happy with how it looks on our avatar. This hair already has the hair bases included, so we don't need to use a different one. I'm using the one in the folder that's for the Evo X Leluca hair base, since that matches the head that I have on. And once the hair base renders, I can then go ahead and add the camo mesh hair, selecting that from my inventory, and then I can just go through the same process of resizing it until I'm happy with the fit. One thing I love about this hair creator is how much versatility and styling that can be offered through the HUD. So we've got our choice of different color palettes, but we also have style options here as well. And this is becoming more popular with hair creators to have this as an added bonus feature. With this HUD, we can even change the ring colors of the hair accessories, which is super cool. Worth noting here that with many women's hair in particular, the creators include lots of different sizes in the pack, which means you don't need to resize it like I showed you previously. You can simply wear the size which fits the head and then just get along with your day without any trouble. The limitation is that you'll have lots more items in your inventory, but you can of course delete the ones that you don't need. If you want to keep your folders nice and tidy, something I always aspire for but often fail at miserably, and with this particular hair from Do, we've also got different styling options and plenty of colors to have fun with. But moving on from hair, let's try out a few accessories so I can give you some tips on how to make it work for you. This time we're looking at earrings from the store Raw, and I found these on the Second Life Marketplace. I showed the process of how to search the marketplace in my previous SL University video, and the importance of reading the description to ensure the item will work for your head or body. But once that's been purchased, we'll open it from our received items and then unpack the object into our main inventory. We can go ahead and move this object out of our received items to keep it organized or just delete the main object if you've already unpacked it. I've added the earrings to this avatar and because they're already rigged to the Lilooka Evo X ears, we don't need to worry about resizing. And when we open up the HUD, we have lots of customization options. For example, we can show and hide different parts of the earrings and either make it very busy or go for something a little more understated. And this HUD has been well designed because we can also control the colors in one place as well. Sticking with this avatar, we're also stopping by Vive9, who sell good quality women's mesh clothing, accessories and shoes. We're picking up one of these cute backpacks to go with this outfit. Again, don't forget to demo first. I've put the bag on by right clicking the item and choosing add. Again, I'm just going to reposition it slightly like I showed you with the hair. By right clicking the item, selecting edit, this will then open up our menu and we can freely move the bag along the axis points until it lines up correctly with the body. No need to resize this one since it already looks pretty good. And once everything is in place, we shouldn't need to change this again. It will stay locked in position. To finish off the look, we're adding one final touch with this chic and fabulous neck scarf, which I found on the marketplace. I'm going for the fat pack here, so we've got access to the color change HUD, but you can of course purchase single colors, which will cost less. After unpacking, we can either wear the rigged or unrigged version. Rigged means that we shouldn't need to reposition it too much, since the work has already been done for us by the creator. But as I've mentioned, this will all depend on the compatibility with the body that you're wearing. I'm always a fan of neck accessories because quite often we encounter neck blending issues when combining different mesh bodies, heads and skins from different creators, so a neck scarf will gracefully hide a multitude of sins so we can think about it another day. And don't worry, I do have some more tutorials coming soon on the Second Life YouTube channel and we'll dive deeper into skins, mesh bodies, mesh heads and all of the fun stuff to help you build your wonderful avatars. I hope you enjoyed the tips from today's video. Feel free to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed it. And of course, any feedback for what you'd like to see in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves and I will see you soon.